everyone. In one of our beginner series videos about the periphery tree window, we briefly talked about users and user groups. In this video, we are going to go into more detail about how users and user groups work within Noxon Config and how they affect the user interface. If you have a look in the periphery tree, you will see a section called user. If you expand this by clicking on the little plus icon, you can see all the accounts that have access to Loxon Config. By default, there is always one user called admin. The password is also by default admin. If we click on this user and look at the properties, you can see there are several fields of information. The first is the password and the repeat password fields. This refers to the password that you use to log into the mini server, web interface or apps with. Next are the fields for the user interface password and repeating the user interface password. This password is what the user will enter if you have enabled user interface passwords on a function block. For example, you can set the burger alarm block to need the password to access it. To do this, simply tick the box in the properties that says user interface password. So if we click on this burger alarm block here and you can see user interface password box here. This function allows you to put extra security on the web interface. To create a new user, click on the user branch in the periphery tree. And then in the blue ribbon at the top, you will see the button to add in a user. Then you can set the username and the password. So we are going to create a user called John, click on the user button, then type in the username John and a password. Then type it in again in the repeat password box. For each user, you can tick which group the user has access to. In our case, John is the adult in the house and has access to the administrators group. If we click on the user group section and open it up, you can see that there are several default groups. Administrators, all, nobody and user. Administrators will by default contain the admin user. All will by default include the admin user and any other users created. Nobody never contains any users. These three groups cannot be deleted. User is a group that added that you can either delete or rename. In our case, we will name it kids. For each user group, you can set what they have access to. The administrator group has access to the user interface, locks on config, FTP access, and Telnet access. For other user groups, you may want to limit this. So instead of adding John to the administrators group, you could add him to an adult group that only has access to the user interface and not locks on config. Then the administrator would be the person who set up the locks on config. We now want to make sure that we add John to the kids group because as the adult, we want him to have access to anything the kids can see as well. So if we click on John and then tick the kids group as well. If we create another user, this time called Ben, and he is the child in the house. So we type in Ben and then the password. And we tick only the kids group. Finally, for each function that is shown on the user interface, you need to set what groups can see the block. So in the case of the burger alarm, you say that there are only administrators allowed to access it locally. So Ben, the child, cannot access the burger alarm. Remotely, you can choose another user group. And in this case, we choose the user group nobody. So now if someone other than you got hold of your phone, they wouldn't be able to disarm the alarm. Most of the function blocks would be set to administrators, but for Ben's bedroom lighting, you would choose the kids group. This means that on Ben's app, he would only see his bedroom lighting, but John would see everything else, including Ben's lighting. User groups enable you to really control what everyone in the house has access to, so they are very useful. Mm -hmm.